Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, thank you, Alan, for inviting me. Thank you, um, BNH. Thank you, Natura, that helped me with this trip. And um, so I think I'm going to start talking about uh, a really important question. It is how to pronounce my name. <laughs> because, so uh, you all know Champs-Élysées, right? So what I did was a really high tech. tech so to explain it to you, is you check just the, the last part, Elise, and then you add a U in the end. So that's how you pronounce my name, Eliseo. Right, but if it gets too hard, this can call me Eli or Eli. <laughs> okay, so um, just want to really quick talk about myself. I moved here six, seven years ago, and came with my wife. My wife is a New Yorker. Actually, my father-in-law is here in the room watching me. And um, so I remember buying the, my, my first camera actually I bought at b &H. I came here to walk. My wife told me, you have to look at this, this place. It's amazing. It has so many cameras. So seven years, six, seven years ago, I bought my first camera. And then I, I came here a lot, b &H, watching. I was there, sitting there all the time, watching, watching online, doing workshops. And uh, so, but photography for me is a way to, to, to show everyone what I see. So it's really important to me. I just had this show about this, this project at Natura store, Elizabeth Street. And um, it was interesting to see like everyone is looking at something that you saw in the past. It's exactly the same thing. That, that, that image that I had in my mind that I composed, everyone is seeing that the same thing. So it's really important for a photographer to see that moment of people looking at your picture. Some of them they like, some of them they don't like it. But it's not up to me, it's up to the public. So I wrote this because it's exactly what I think. The art of capturing moments has the power to transport people to a different place in time. It's about bringing the unknown to those who could be not part of that specific time and space. That's what I wrote to explain what I just saw. So that's the name that I picked to my, um, to my project, because in um, Natutama, it um, means the world underwater. In Tikuna, Tikuna is a language spoke around for 40,000, around 40,000 people in the Amazon. It's really hard now to to get into them because it's it's dispersed. There's not that many people right now that say I am Tikuna, but you can see it. This, the same lens, everyone, it, they are um, part of the the Tikuna language. And this, the, the font, I kind of want to do it like the way I was navigating in the Amazon. So that's why I picked this trip. So that's the river that I cross. So I started here on the left side in a place called Yurimaguas. And 45, 50 days later, I finished in Belém, Brazil. So I started in Peru, stopped in Colombia, and crossed the entire river to Belém. So the first place was Yurimaguas, is the city that I stopped. It was the first like contact with the place that I want, I always want to go, to the Amazon. I never had the opportunity to go when I was living in Brazil. So as soon as I, I got there, I, this was the image that I saw. That's the port of Yurimaguas, one of the main ports of Yurimaguas. So this is just to have, so you can have a, um, an idea how it looks. So you see the trucks unloading, people working, some of them taking a bath on the river. So that's the, um, the thing there. Let me just see what I am right here. So. <laughs> This is where you buy your ticket to the boat. <laughs> so there's a guy with a calculator, <laughs> and then they say, so 
a little bit about my, my, the way I see photograph. I always try to make you look oh, every single direction of my, the picture. So I always wait, like I see the guys on the left, and I see these guys standing on the right, so I kind of wait for my main subject to walk in. I always try to do that. That's the way I photograph. I and mean, here you can see it, example this, and the people, so they are getting eggs, right here, you can see it, eggs. So I always try to see it, put people around all, every single side of the, it's, it's an unusual thing, I mean, of course, not that unusual, but that's the way I, I like to photograph. So this one, this story was, if you, so I was reading this sign because I was by myself. So I had to lock, I had my backpack, two backpacks, one of clothing, hammock, everything. I left on the boat, put a lock on it. And then I, with all the backpack, I had my camera, hard drive, everything that, that I had, and my passport. So I was walking around to just to have the feel what what, like, where should I go? Because I, this river is the main river, they use, is the main um, course to bring all the drugs from Peru to Colombia and Brazil, all the, the way around. So Brazil to Colombia to, so it, it is a little bit dangerous. It's a dangerous place, a little bit. So, and I was looking at it, and I saw this sign. It says, Sale Oi at 6.30, so it means it's gonna leave today at 6.30. So that's good, so I'm gonna get to Wikita soon. So it'll be like three days, it'll be fine. So, and then I start asking people, and they say, no, this, this boat's been here for five days. They keep changing, sale hoy, sale hoy, but they didn't. So, I say, all right, so, I don't know if the boat's gonna leave today, so I'm gonna walk around and take pictures. Because uh, uh, before I put my hammock up, I'm gonna walk around and see it. And so, and I was walking around, I saw the truck. I mean, I'm, you see the boat in the back? This the, the boat, this right here. So or, that was the boat that I was supposed to take. So I was, and I saw this, this picture in my mind. I see the, the bags on the right, and the people carrying. I say, all right, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna start to photograph the workers. Let's see um, what I can do. And then I start to photograph the workers. And then I call this one runaway because they look like they're walking the runaway. And um, so those guys, they work at least 12, 15 hours a day carrying bags of sugar and salt. So as you can see it here, I caught this picture is like 22, 20, um, 220 pounds of sugar or salt in, on his back. You see it here. And they work all day, all day around. And here's just a short video, so you can see it, like they working really quick. At night, I start to photograph, like, I would say noon, and then this was at night. So around, I would say, so that, I photographed, I recorded that video at 1.47 a.m. So they've been working since like 12, all the way to 2 a.m. in the morning. So, and then uh, I was, I put my hammock up, say, all right, so it's not leaving today, it's gonna leave tomorrow, someone told me it's gonna leave it in the morning at 8 a.m. and uh, say, all right, so I'm going to put my hammock up and then someone's arguing downstairs and say, you're not gonna leave tomorrow. You're saying you're gonna leave, you're not gonna leave. 
And then someone told, I'm going to take the other boat. It's a faster boat. It's going to leave at 3 AM. So I, I, was, I asked around. I said, yeah, you have to go to this street. So I left. I put everything back on my backpack, left the place. And then I went to f try to find this boat. It's called Rapido, Clever. So, <laughs> and then so it's supposed to take uh, 12 hours from um, Iurimagos to Nauta, and from Nauta take a, a, a bus to Iquitos. We'll be, that will be the next step. So um, it didn't take 12 hours, of course, and then did not leave at 3 AM. So that takes us to the next chapter. It's called Huayaga River. Sorry my pronunciation. I don't, don't speak Spanish that, that well. but. Um, so I just took some like uh, regular shots so you can see it, like how it looks. So that's out of the boat, the clever boat, the long boat. And the, the seats are pretty comfortable as you see it. So and then the chair that was sitting was this, like kind of this chair. So that's how I kind of, I was laying down. So it took. 48 hours instead of 12. I'm going to explain why. But so, and then I start to photograph people on the boat and every single stop. I say, I want to see faces. I want to talk to them. And then so I start to photograph this kid like sleeping because there's nothing to do for like 48 hours. The boat stops. You get up sometimes to buy food and come back. But so <laughs> this is the. You know, you have the captain on a boat that turns on the boat and then to move forward and back. So we have the captain in the front, but in the back we have this guy. He controls the, the speed. He controls if you're going to go on reverse or forward. That's uh, so we had like a, a extra a spare <laughs> engine just in case. So. And then I start to photograph the, like all the stops, uh, people on the boat. As you see, like that's the way I, I kind of like to photograph. I put sometimes I, I cut people's head because I like to. I don't. It's not important. So what is important, like all the lines and everything for me. And here, that's how. It, that's another port. So pretty much all the ports in, in Peru, Colombia, they are very rustic. So that's how it looks. The most of the ports. That's another picture of the. So that's a, like a regular boat. And uh, so as you see it, I was trying to explain like all my pictures, I do this. And then this guy, I was waiting him to, I saw he coming. So I took like three pictures to get him kind of sort of in the middle. And this is like the way I felt inside the boat was like really tight and everything. So this lady with the Ramon's t-shirt, she, she was deciding like, so in the 15 minutes before we, they stopped our boat, they told us why the boat wasn't leaving and it would, why it would take 48 hours. Because what, there was a protest in the river with the natives because it was an oil company that spilled oil in the river and killed all the fish. So they were going hunger, so they were protesting. So there was, we are like 15 minutes away from this protest. And the, the captain say, I'm not going through. So, and then they're deciding, so let's move people to another boat, to a local boat, and they can take you. So that boat, they put us in a really small boat, like really small, with the same amount of people on a really small boat. And anyone knows what happened if you put a lot of people inside a small boat? Anyone? So that was the, in the middle of the night, the guy said, you need to stop. I said, why? The boat is sinking. So there was, it was really dark. So this, so we have an idea. <laughs> Here's a bucket taking water off of the, the boat, the water off the boat. And um, <laughs> there was a nightmare. What he did was he stopped at the margin, asked everyone to leave. So we left the boat. Still on the margin of the um, Amazon River. <laughs> and 
and wait for him to get out water out of the boat. <laughs> the mute didn't stop like for a second. So, and then go to the next. So what I did, I just, I'm grabbing a little parts of the trip. So I can show you and I'm like, it was a fun experience and um, taught me a, a lot about um, people in um, Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. I can see the difference. And also, uh, I learned a lot. It was kind of a trip to get subjects out so I can photograph in the future. So basically, that's what happened with this trip. So the tiny boat, that was one of the boats that I took, this one on, on the right, the same size as the one on the left. That was raining, and then I realized like they keep putting people inside the boat. Doesn't matter if it's full, it's almost full, they're gonna keep shoving people inside the boat. And it's gonna be a lot of fight always. So, and then I was inside the boat waiting for boat to, to get more people. So what I did, I started to photograph from inside the boat, people getting in. And I took some of the photographs that I, this one I really like it because I, I was trying to frame this guy, this, and then it says Feliz Viaje on the side, but I didn't see there's a third guy in the back. So I kind of like, really like this, uh, the way I frame this, this picture. So see it, they keep like putting people inside the boat. And <laughs> this guy was checking to see like if he could put more people inside. <laughs> and uh, so they, that was the one of the experience. And uh, Iquitos, so finally 48 hours later, I got into Iquitos. And then it's a really nice town, but it's quite dangerous. We, every time, like every day in daylight, people get mugged with knives and it's all the time. So I was, I was skeptical, but like, so I, first I got there and I started to walk around to see where I should go. And then I saw this boat. <laughs> and um, you guys know the uh, Fitzcarraldo movie. I think the older people know. So they filmed part of the movie there. So they, and this is abandoned boat. Now they use the people used to do drugs, and then some couples they go there to <laughs> to mate. So <laughs> um, so and then I start to photograph on um, the houses, boats, and everything. You see the houses on the stilts? So this, there was a low tide in uh, November. So the, the tide started to go up in December. So um, th from December to July, the water level goes up. So about in July, the water goes up in here on the stilts. That's why all the, most of the house there is on, on top of stilts. This is from the other side of the, the houses. They are like, you see, like they have grass, everything, but on top, it's all the, the water level goes all the way up there. So this is another port in Iquitos, one of the main ports in Iquitos. You see the houses, they don't have the stilts here, but they're on top of logs. So what means is, when you have the high tide, all the, the houses, they go up with the tide or down, depending on the, the, the time of year. So and then this was, uh, I picked some photographs just to show you like the way the houses are. But in this one, you kind of can see it, the, the stilt. So all those houses on the right, they're going up and going to be the same level as this one. It seems this year, they are having a problem already because all the water levels went up like really, really bad. So it's, it's getting worse and worse. They are complaining always that they are complaining about the, they didn't have enough water by the, from July to December. And now it's the opposite. To July last month, the water went up. So they lost a lot of things inside the houses. So it's being a, a problem right now. It's, of course, it, it's, uh, people say it's the global warming, but so, and this is another port. I just want to show you this photograph. This kid, actually, I saw it later. <laughs> I was trying to get this guy, and there's something interesting in the, in the back. When I photographed, I didn't see the kid. I'm honestly, I didn't see her. So she was looking at me, and I kind of love this. 
And also, I'm not going to tell you my, the, the, <laughs> the company that I use my cell phone, but I have reception signal for the entire trip in the Amazon. So now everyone in Amazon, they have, they have cell phones. So that's really important because they can report problems, they can uh, ask for help, they can watch what's going on in the world, they can do difference at home. This is uh, Mr. Alcides. Um, so he, what he's doing here, he's, this is a palm leaf tree, um, palm leaves. They put into dry, and if, so they can use as a roof for hit the house. So, and I'm um, going back really quick. You can see the water level here. You see it on the right, right here. So the water goes all the way up there, and th all those houses, including Mr. Alcides house, go up, and and down. So when it's a low tide, it's important because they have the whole, the whole field to to do stuff. They can play soccer. They are playing soccer, and uh, they can uh, use this like to dry things and uh, to plant also. Also in Iquitos, um, we have, um, it's called the rival. This is another port when the, the big boats come in, um, with uh, products, fish, um, acai, um, all kind of fruits. And uh, so as soon as the boat arrives, people start to run to the boat to get like the best, like the best fish, or to even just say hello to like a, a, a family member. So, as you see in here, you see the guy jumping inside the boat. So that's what happened. As soon as the boat, I mean, the boat even stopped, the people like jumping in to, to get like a better place to, to buy fish. And I started to photograph this process of people. This guy, I thought it was really interesting. Like, he didn't move that much. He was like looking at out there. Um, yeah, I really, I really like this one because it's, for me it's kind of powerful. You see the guy hold his father or grandfather on his back, taking out of the, the boat. And we have, here, yeah, see the guys with the vest? We have people that works for all the supermarkets, they um, they wear vests so they can be they have this license to to be a carrier. So again, these guys they take a lot of um, uh, weight on their backs all the time. So, and here you can see all the fish, like really beautiful fish. You can buy right really fresh out of the boat, and. Um, and it's crowded. So you see how like, people, it's really, really intense to be there. And I was trying to be <laughs> undercover to photograph because they, they know I'm not from there. You can tell, so, especially because I had a camera in my hand. And I, <laughs> and I have a, a kind of, I would say big camera, is the Canon uh, 5D, so it's kind of big, so they can really see it. So I was trying to walk around and photograph and then put it back my backpack and get out because it's not a very safe place to photograph. But again, if you live there, it's fine. It's like, I'm talking about safe, but I'm from Rio de Janeiro. So it's, <laughs> so you understand, I'm, I, I know, <laughs> I know when like, the place is not safe. So, <laughs> and here you can see it, um, people like getting together to get the fish and there's a guy, the cashier in the, in the middle selling fish to people. And then, so in this moment, there's a guy in the back, he screams, hey gringo, take a picture of me. You see like 100 people like look at you. And I was like, I was trying to hide and I'm, this guy was, hey, take a picture of me. And I said, okay, go there, I'll take a picture of you. So I went down and then he said, take a picture of me, but make me look good with this fish. I wanna be, look good. So. I took a picture of him, <laughs> and and uh, 
So yeah, because it put me in danger a little bit. So I was kind of afraid after that. But uh, so that's the picture, and I really like it. You know, I took three pictures, and this one I, I like the most. So, typical Amazon house. Remember when I told you about the logs? So, this is uh, how like this is in Brazil. The, those people they live so this is a, the grandfather's house and this is that's his daughter's house There's, they are stick together and they go up and down the same thing and now with the low tide they they put those um, like the like the pass to go to the, the mainland oh, they have pigs some of the cattle they use the land and when the, the, the when they have the high tide they have to move all the cattle, all the livestock back up the hill because it gets flooded. So this is a typical fam Brazilian family in the Amazon. So as you see, the house, people, someone told me, oh, but it's very clean. I say, of course they're clean, we are Brazilians. Everything needs to be clean inside the house. Doesn't matter where you live, inside your house is going to be clean. So they have the refrigerator here. All the electricity comes from a main, like a main city most of the times. So some, sometimes like you think, why they don't use um, the solar panels? There are some uh, NGOs that are working on it. They are trying to provide solar panels to those people. So can, they don't depend on the main city that was be, that would be Manaus one of the biggest cities and uh, so they, they have electricity here and the water they have a well in the back on the mainland that they have to fill up the, all the bottles you can see the, all the bottles here to use so it's pretty simple the house and uh, I was really ha happy to to have like gone inside the house and he cooked for me a fish they just grabbed from the water and they, that he's cleaning the plate and um, the problem with the river is um, the bathroom. All, like, all the fecal mirrors, they go in the water. There's no way, to, there's nowhere to go. So it's, everything goes in the water, all the houses. So it's, they cannot drink the water from the river. There's no way. So that's why I had, they need like a well or like bringing water from the city. Oh, I mean here, it is um, a typical house also, but it's, just, um, it's the same house as his daughter. You can see the underwear here, <laughs> and then the coolers, the, and all the house. So basically, all the families, like one family, they live together close to each other. And then if you go up the river a little bit more, there's another family with five, six houses. And they are complaining because the logs, they say it's cost like $1,000, $1,500 to buy one log. Now, all the prices went up. Before you could cut your own log, but they don't have anymore. You don't see, like you see those trees, but they are small back here. They, can, they have to buy the log. In the Amazon, that they have to buy the log. And all the big companies, they sell, but it's $1,500 for a big log. So sometimes they cannot fix their houses. So. I, yeah, so this one, uh, you can, I like this, I name it Antenna. This one, because they are, it's a it's a regular house, but just a floating house. I mean, I recommend everyone if you have opportunity to go to the Amazon, and then visit those places. There's no there's no like tours to see the houses. You have to talk to someone, and then ask them, can I go visit your house? I would like to see it. I'm photographing. They are pretty open to anything. So faces of Amazon. I did some portraits in the Amazon. And uh, again, I, I stop and uh, I say, hey, I'm a photographer. <laughs> I'm doing this project. I'm crossing the Amazon River. Can I photograph you? L less than five minutes. They say, yeah, come home. And they give you food, they give you water. They share what they have. So. This was uh, our lunch one day. So 
So this couple, I have to, I promised them to print one picture and send back to them because they don't have a picture of themselves. So I kind of promised them to send it back. So I just better make a note before I forget. But <laughs> you know, photographers. So I, now I have a friend that like help me. If, yeah, he can get to them. And um, so this is like um, typical Brazilian. Um, Dad, they went to visit his daughter that works at the Santarém, a city of Santarém in Pará. Yeah, so you saw the, 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 um, the chairs on the beginning, like the small boats, but the big boats, they, they don't put like a lot of chairs on the big boats. So what I do, you bring your own hammock to travel. So but this is like the main room of the boat. Anyway, you put your hammock. You have to get there earlier, otherwise you're going to end close to the restroom, and it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I read before, so I, I was safe. I always went in the front. And then also, in the front, you know we have the wind during the night, so it doesn't get that cold. By the back of the boat, it gets really, really cold, even in the summer. So the people, those boats, they can accommodate around 720 people, and it's a slow boat. And um, I had a problem because when I was there, New York Times wrote about it. I think Simon Romero was there. I don't. I can't remember how, who wrote about, but about pirates in Amazon. And I was there, so my email started popping. Mom, uncle, everybody emailed me. You have to be careful. We have to be careful, because what happened is with the big boats, they're they're slow. And the pirates comes with a fast boat. That happens all the time. They stop beside the boat, go up, and rob every single one inside the boat and leave in the middle of the night. So there's no, no police, anything. It's you by yourself. So what I did, I, um, I, I don't think you can see in this picture, but they have all the life jackets on top. I have my hard drive hidden on a life jacket. That was the most important thing. They can check my camera, everything, but not my hard drive, because I'm by the end of the trip. So if they take my hard drive, I'm being gone, because there's no, there is internet, but I cannot upload all the pictures to the cloud, because there are big files. So then, and videos also. This, <laughs> so you can choose to go up or down with the cargo, see it? Sometimes, I didn't see any, but sometimes there are cars inside, motorcycles, everything. So that's how we sleep on a hammock. That's how you networking, right? Network on a hammock. You make friends, you talk. That's sometimes, it goes for four days, five days, six days sometimes. On the same boat, same people, everything. They're like You get up, look at the river, and it's not, sometimes like 10 kilometers. Like, you don't see the margin. It's like really far. So it's just water and water. So it just it had nothing to do in the boat for like six days. So you have to talk, you have to read, you have to know people. So I do have a bunch of pictures of people <laughs> on, on a hammock. I just picked some so I can show it to you. See this guy? I picked this one just to show the cell phone. So everyone now on, in the Amazon, they, they have cell phones, they have the reception. So sometimes, like, really, when the, the river gets uh, narrower, there's no service. So, but it's the only time. When you like, get closer to another city, because it's a city, it's one city and then uh, 20 kilometers, another city, another city. And I'm uh, sorry, uh, miles, I still have problems with miles, so I use kilometers. You can Google a little bit. Um, <laughs> so that's how you sleep. You see it? And then one thing I found out was about the cold, remember I told you? Um, the cold comes from the bottom, not from the top, the hammock. Because the, it's a fabric in your back. So it doesn't matter if you cover yourself up here, because the cold comes from the bottom. So I found that later. Uh, it was my mistake. But <laughs> The typical, um, also, um, so this dog, uh, 
So this guy, actually, sorry, this guy, I had a magazine with me. And he asked for the magazine, said, can I read your magazine? When you say that, sometimes say, yeah, right. You're going to read an article, too. He spent the whole five, four days reading my magazine. So I, I, I didn't read the magazine so because he had it for the four days. So I like this because you travel. So you see it here. You have the bags in the, on top of um, a crate, um, how you call it, a pallet. Because if it rains, everything's going to get wet. Everything. So I did, um, before like, I did my pics of the, the, like, the pictures that I like, that I'm going to show. But they are available for sale if you can go on my website and ask. There was one I'm going to show now. And also they are in the Espaço Gallery in Tribeca. There's some of the, the pictures. Um, this one, again, I didn't say it, but like, I was really lucky, I guess, to have them like almost the same the space between them going towards the boat. I really like this uh, frame. I worked that I, I took like, I would say 15, 20 pictures. And that was the one I, I got it in the formation. So in photography, I guess you, you really have to be patient. Like, it doesn't matter. If it's not good, the picture doesn't, don't put it on your Instagram, don't do anything. Just wait for the right moment, you know? And also, but when you're doing news, I'm talking about, when you're doing news, just you have to photograph everything because, and don't, don't delete anything from your camera. Later at home, you're gonna see it, the pictures. Sometimes when you didn't like it, it's gonna be the one, really the one you're gonna choose. It's like people like taking bath on the river. This guy had a, disability so he was his first time like in like a year I guess they, his dad say he's going to water um, so this one just uh, right here I um, I, I call grabs and bottles <laughs> those are bags of crap all the crabs you see I mean if you get closer you can see uh, the <laughs> all the crabs inside the, the so they sell around I, I wrote in here because uh, 20,000 crabs and the city Macapacapa a year 20,000 a year and the bottle because of this so I really like this picture the way I, I so this was the one that I, I didn't I took some pictures of this and I, this one I didn't see it until I got home. When I got home, I saw the bottle. I said, "Oh, that that will be the picture." And um, so this is a crane. And again, it's wait, wait, wait. This crane was there, and then I saw he would fly, and then he changed his position, and I changed mine. I was waiting for him to fly, so I was waiting, waiting, waiting. But not that much, but um, I wait a little bit. And then, so sometimes you have to, to think of the next move will be to photograph. That's my way to photograph. And sometimes I got the background and I wait for the subject to walk in. Same thing, it shows like another, the power, like the powerful people in the Amazon, they have a lot of strength and uh, they work a lot. And this one I liked because the guy here is kind of posing. See it? I don't know if he saw me or not, but he's kind of posing back there, like being strong. And um, oh, so this is the Amazon River. A regular uh, soccer mom van, you know. <laughs> that's how people go around in Amazon. Some of them, they, are, they can't afford a boat, so that's how you go around. There, there are no buses most of the time between cities, so they have to use boats everywhere. This one is a city called Afua in Brazil. I was waiting from, from my my boat to uh, depart with the boats back there. And then I said, I saw the light coming and people walking and then I see the light like 
hitting like half of them. I said, all right, so they're going to be a, a good photograph. So I waited. I took a bunch of pictures with like random people, and this one I liked the most with the kid because the, the light is like about you know, half of his face. Can you see it on the, on the screen? He said, yeah. And uh, it's a little bit like lighter on my computer, but so this is uh, Nafua. It's a, it's a town that only, that there are no cars, only bicycle. I have the whole series about this, this, uh, this island. So again, I, this trip for me was like to get subjects for future projects that I'm, I'm working on it. I want to go back and uh, sometimes spend time in like a specific places and uh, to photograph like this, this town. Uh, when New York Times was there, at the same time I was there. But like if they are behind me a little bit. They're going, I think, the other direction. I was going to Brazil. I think they're going to, uh, to Peru. Th this guy is like, he's uh, tapping. Um, it's, uh, it's called Copaiba, is the oil. Um, the Copaiba can use for um, uh, some like uh, exposed, um, how do you say? Um, I wrote in here. I forgot the name of the. Uh, so you can use the anti-inflammatory. You can use for like <laughs> shampoo. You can use uh, for B Natura, one the company that. So the reason I took this photograph because I went to try to find this tree. It took me four hours by car because I was in a big city. Four hours by car, two hours and a half in a small canoe to try to find this tree. And then I knew, I knew some people work with this tree in this location. So I went there to try to find it. When I got there, half of the was, you see, fire pretty much burned everything. So what I did, I don't know, I sent the pictures to them, but I only photograph for them, for the website, only this way. So the other way, and then it's in color because for them I photographed in color. But my, all my pictures are in black and white. And this guy, he took two hours to tap this tree, like rotating and then perforating the, the tree. He had to get to the middle and then the liquid comes out. That's how you go. If you in more interesting, you can go to their website and see it. I had, there is a video of it. What's the company called? Uh, Natura, N-A-T-U-R-A. -A. Yeah, I'm going to show it, I think, in the, by the end of the... And this one, you know, you know on the subway that sometimes you like ride in subway, especially the A and C, sometimes they get together and then you can see the people cross your window. So that happens in Amazon as well, but with boats. So, and then sometimes you see people like talking with each other across the boats, like all passengers. So I really like, this is one of my favorite photographs that uh, it's kind of like mysterious. You don't see the people, the, like the, the lady's face or the guy's face. And this, also this one is in the gallery. And um, this is one of my favorite ones. And after this one, I start working with more shadows. So again, photographs is like, I always like constantly learning, learning, learning. So after this one, I got, and I was looking at the picture, say, oh, wow the shadows on the face. So I've been doing this in the city. As soon as I got back, I started doing this in the subways. I'm walking around and waiting for the shadows to cut the face. And then so I'm doing a work, just New York subway system, just with shadows. But because of this photograph. So this one. I'm gonna go back this one. I just wanna show you first. So remember when I told like, about the pirates, they come in the fast boats. And the, one of the reasons they can get to you is because of this. You see this video? It's a short video, but that's what you see in Amazon at night.
So what you saw was during the trip at night, all the other boats, the smaller boats, they come in together to buy and sell products. So what are they doing is they link together and they buy and sell on move like moving so they don't stop because it's a dangerous place so they don't stop so they just keep going so the guy's gonna attach to us they're gonna buy they're gonna like cheese fruits everything and they're gonna leave and another boat's gonna come in so the picture be before that you can see two boats attached to each other and they're like buying and selling so the that's exactly the way how the pirates do in the Amazon. So for that video, I was sleeping, and then I heard something. You know, the first thing I looked my hard drive it was instinct. I looked at my hard drive, grabbed my camera, and then I ran to the to see it. I thought, I thought were pirates. <laughs> I can't confess, but it wasn't. Thanks was those guys buying. So that was a moment that I, I thought one of the most interesting things for me was this moment, like how you buy and sell. Uh, goods in the Amazon. That's the way you do it. So, I mean, in the river, not in the Amazon. Amazon's big, they have big cities, cars and airplanes, everything. But So, why I choose this picture as the main picture, as the only picture with color? I did this because most of the people, they think Amazon, all the animals, they outnumber humans and like you're gonna see it, you're gonna see all green giant plants. You do see this, but the real Amazon 2017, there are the people. And if you want to preserve, if you want to help them, you have to recognize they are there. You have to know they're there. And you cannot change that. That's why I picked this picture. So people usually they think they're gonna see animals. Of course I love animals, but that's not that's not the Amazon that nowadays. And um, so, and I say, yeah, so it, it, the population like is growing, 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 and then there's no one helping them, no one. Even the government, we all know, news, but the people are just being forgotten, like they, they need help. Some of us, I don't know who, is gonna help them somehow. So the main project, this project is not finished yet. I wanna go back, I wanna keep doing. But I just want to photograph people in Amazon. That's the main thing. The, how the people work, how they live. Because if you really want, like the Amazon, you should start paying attention to, to the people there. And uh, so this is uh, something that I, I really like. I just want you guys to read. It says, in the end, we all conserve what we love. We love only what we understand. And we understand what you were taught. So that's uh, our, our paper in this world as photographers is to help to bring a better world to the people. That's what I think. So that's the name, Instagram. All right, so I know it's a quick, but quick presentation. It's not because it's not a lecture. I cannot go in for two hours just showing pictures. All right, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.